Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'm Arif, your Cloudland Journey Partner. Today's video is very special because in today's video, we're going to talk about AWS CloudFormation. Before talking about CloudFormation, I just want to talk about uh, what is uh, infrastructure as a code. So whenever we are talking about infrastructure as a code here, we are uh, talking about one uh, infrastructure which is uh, totally defined by uh, code. So it could be a JSON code, it could be a YML code. So pretty much like if we run the template or the stack on uh, our uh, environment, then all the resources like the servers, the database, the security groups, everything will be deployed automatically from the, the stack, from the template. So isn't it cool? So what's the benefit of, of using uh, this uh, infrastructure as a code? The first benefit is that once you make it uh, understood that this is how I want my infrastructure uh, to host, then uh, once you have the stack, you can run it in multiple uh, region whenever you want to, and it will uh, come with the same results. So there are very uh, less chances to get any sort of error. That's uh, really great. And just think about the DR plan. So suppose your primary region goes down and you have to deploy everything from scratch in your secondary region. In that case, if you do it manually, it's gonna take a long, long time if it's a very big architecture. But if you have a cloud formation stack or an infra infrastructure as a code stack, or template, you can just run it and with a single click, everything will be deployed for yourself. Isn't it cool? So today we're gonna just go through that. Uh, before we start the video, just want to talk about myself. Well, uh, I do have uh, more than eight years of experience in cloud computing. I do have multi certification in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Beside that, I also hold uh, CISSP and CCSP certification. You can see my certification in the background. So this channel is all about cloud computing, cybersecurity. So if you're interested in this field, this channel is definitely for you. So I'm planning to upload more and more videos related to uh, these topics. Um, so please like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this sort of content. So without further delay, let's get this started. I have logged into my uh, personal AWS account and from the search menu we have to look for cloud formation. So I'm gonna open it. So this is the CloudFormation. Before that, uh, let's uh, visit the default CloudFormation page. So AWS CloudFormation model and provision all your cloud infrastructure. So it's uh, IaaS infrastructure as a code platform. So uh, here we can see some uh, subsections like stack, stack sets, uh, and some other uh, components. We'll go through it later. <laughs> So in today's video, what you're gonna do, you're gonna create an architecture using the uh, CloudFormation template. So for that, we need to create a stack. So here I am clicking this create a stack button. And here we do have three options to create a stack. First one is template is ready. So suppose if you already have a template that uh, you prepared earlier, so you can just upload the template in a S3 bucket and you can define the template URL in here and you can deploy your architecture in this way. Or uh, you can also upload the template directly from your local machine. So that's the first option. The second option is that you, you can uh, use a sample template. So um, you maybe you are a new learner, you want to explore this uh, specific service. And trust me, if you know CloudFormation, it's uh, gonna help you a lot in your career because nowadays in any sort of uh, AWS related job interviews, uh, I am pretty sure they're gonna ask you whether you are familiar with this uh, CloudFormation uh, console where they're familiar with uh, CloudFormation resources. Uh, if you say, yes, I have experience with this, uh, your chances to get the job will be much more higher. So uh, this is the one, uh, second option. The third option is to create a template in designer. So you can see it and you can create the template from designer. In today's video, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create it using a sample template. So here, there are some pre-built templates in here for us. The first one is a simple, uh, it's like a LAMP stack. So it will create a LAMP stack using a single EC2 instance 
a local MySQL database for storage. So it's a very simple one. Then the Ruby Rails stack, the WordPress block, the uh, multi-AZ simple. So this one will create it, but in a multiple ability zones to ensure the fault tolerance. And the last one is uh, Windows, uh, and uh, it's uh, coming up uh, coming with uh, Windows feature and rules and the Windows Active Directory. So for the sake of today's video, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, create the very simple one that is the uh, create a lamp stack using a single ec2 instance and local mysql database for storage so after selecting this one now we're gonna do one cool thing in here so we're gonna see the this in a designer how it looks like so so that we can go through it and how things are working at the back end to get some sort of idea so if we click in here view in designer So if I, I have to zoom in. So here you can see it's uh, some resources are defined in here, but it's very small to uh, see. So that's why I need to use, make it bigger in size. Yeah. So this is uh, pretty much like creating one instance an ECT instance and uh, this ECT instance will have this security group so it looks very simple right but uh, if we see the code that uh, is uh, creating these resources for us here um, I uh, I always uh, prefer the YML one you can also if you are good at JSON they can also create this template using the JSON one so uh, let's uh, select the YML one if uh, we look closely to this code here we have uh, defined the description the key name the parameters and what kind of instances are allowed to be created by this uh, template and uh, yes we have defined each and everything like uh, all the setting under the mysql so all the setting and configuration are defined in here so just think about it so if you have uh, your whole architecture ready in a code isn't it great so if you face any problem or if you want to change the region or if you want to do some uh, dear just uh, uh, recovery practice or uh, at the time of actual disaster uh, disaster event you can just uh, deploy it in another region and boom you have everything ready um, it may seem like a lot of work at the very beginning that uh, coming up with this uh, uh, template uh, to create everything uh, uh, to create everything because uh, you can ask I can create these resources with few clicks under the console but the question here is uh, whether it's feasible to create a template and the answer for it is definitely it is because uh, if you are dealing with multiple services that are integrating together then uh, uh, it would be very time consuming to create it at the time of a dear event at the time of actual year event for that reason like having this sort of template is a really a blessing so here we have uh, we have look into this template that's good so I'm gonna go back real quick okay so again selecting this one and the lamp stack and we have seen that the designer and going to the next section so uh, here this is a cool part so first uh, we need to define a name i'm gonna call it test because uh, i'm gonna do it anyway after the video uh, so the db name so we can also pass parameters so suppose uh, you want to create a db or any other resources you want to uh, pass parameter when you work will create those resources you can do it by this feature the parameter feature so the db name my uh, my database then the db password we can define any password that you want db root password we can define that too and then the test db user and here we can select the instance type uh, if you can recall a few seconds ago when we were going through the template there we said uh, we uh, we have seen that lot of uh, uh, instance type are defined there so these are coming from there so for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go with the T2 micro because uh, this is not a pro prod environment for me. And the key name. So when we'll create a EC2, uh, ser EC2 server, we need to create a key. So here we can uh, provide the key name. So I'm going to call it test key. Cool. OK, 
Okay, and the SSH location, the IP address range that uh, can be used to SSH or EC2 install. So this rule, when if we define 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0, that means from anywhere our server can be accessed. So anyone from anywhere can uh, uh, SSH into our server. This is what we're defining in here. All right, so if I go to the next, so in the next section in here, uh, we need to define the role. So if we already have one role, we can define that, but uh, um, most of the time I don't even uh, uh, define a role. I always uh, use uh, as a blank in here. So, and uh, keep everything as default and here are the uh, parameters, the configuration that we have defined. Now we have to just click submit and uh, boom, it's now in uh, uh, progress. So if we want to see the event, so here uh, we can see all the events under uh, here. So if we refresh it, see the parameter validation fail, parameter value, parameter keep name does not exist, rollback request by the user. So. This is a this was a mistake. I made the mistake intentionally because I wanted to show you this uh, rollback feature. So what is this rollback? So suppose in your code uh, you have uh, defined that you need to pass this parameter and for some reason you didn't pass that parameter or something goes wrong when at the time of creating those resources. By default, the behavior of uh, the default behavior of uh, CloudFormation machines that if at any point it faces any problem, it will roll back it will do the complete rollback. So this is uh, a feature that I wanted to talk about. So, okay, so now as we face this error, let's go back and uh, try to fix it. So again, I came back to the stack section and here I'll click uh, with new resources. And this time I'm gonna choose the same one that uh, we tried to create earlier this one and next so this time I'm gonna pass all the parameters uh, this okay DB user name t2 let's make it t2 micro and uh, keep here name of an existing EC2 keep here to enable SSH access to this so currently I don't have any key here. So uh, let's go back to EC2 console real quick and create a key here so that you can define it in here. All right, so here, how can you create a key here? You have to click in this key here section and create a key here and uh, give it a name. I'm gonna call it test key for this video. And I will create a p.pm key and keep your RSA is good for me and uh, I'll hit the gate key. So you can see uh, the keep here has two section, the public and private key as a section. So now the one part of the key is uh, downloaded in my local machine that I can use to do the SSH into any server if I use this key to uh, uh, deploy an EC2 server. All right, so now we have it and uh, we have to unfortunately refresh it once again because uh, uh, there was no refresh button. So here, lamp stack, uh, we call it test uh, one, password, we can define that, root password, we can define that, DB user, we'll define it two, and we'll change it to T2, uh, t2 micro and this time we can see our test key in here because uh, we already created the key so and this is each uh, location so uh, we have talked about uh, uh, 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0 uh, meaning so we are all good so now uh, let's go to the next and uh, come here and hit uh, submit so now everything should be fine because we have defined our SSH uh, key here in here. And uh, let's do some uh, refresh in here. So see the all the resources are creating. So here we can see what kind of resources are being created. So here we can see the security group is being created, the instance is in progress and uh, 
yes the everything all the resources are in uh, play so it takes some time because at the back end it's uh, deploying all the resources after some time we're gonna see all of resources uh, from our EC2 console because uh, right now it's in the deploying uh, phase so we have to wait a few seconds in the meantime I'm gonna show you some other sections of this uh, uh, CloudFormation stack so here we can see all the configuration that we have defined at the very beginning here are the events where we can see all the events that are taking place at this moment and the resources so what resources are being created with this uh, template can be seen in here. So it has created a security group, it has created a web server instance, that means an EC2 server is created. And the output, uh, still no output, and the parameters that, here are the parameters that we have passed earlier. And uh, boom, here we can see the template that we have used to deploy our resources. So this is the template and change set so suppose if you want to uh, after deploying some uh, resources or architecture now you want to make a change a small change uh, to your infrastructure you can use this feature so if you use change set first uh, you can validate whether after making these changes what sort of uh, uh, change is gonna happen in your infrastructure once you uh, uh, validate it then you after being totally sure then you can uh, make those changes uh, uh, deployed under your environment so this is a very cool feature so I'm gonna go back to the event section once again and uh, let's do a hard refresh from here cool so here you can see some of the resources uh, are in uh, complete state and summer in progress why not we go to the ec2 instance section the ec2 console and see what ha what's happening there so right now here you can see one uh, instance this instance is uh, t2 micro so this is uh, uh, initializing that's why the status was in a uh, progress state so without uh, doing anything just uh, using a template we can create our resources here you can see it so this is a very simple example but uh, think like a complete architecture a complete web application can be deployed using this not only the servers even if you want to deploy a lambda function um, a serverless architecture you can use a cloud formation stack that's very good so here you can see the security group and the role that uh, the rule that we had defined earlier. So if we see in here the inbound rule, the 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, that one that we defined earlier, it's added to our security group because that's the one we uh, uh, we specified earlier. So that's cool. So now let's go back to our cloud formation stack section. So now if we see the status, it's uh, in uh, create complete. So that means the deployment is successful. And the output, as the output now, we got a website URL because uh, we deployed a LAMP stack, right? So uh, if I click this one, boom. Now we have our AWS CloudFormation PHP sample. This is the default PHP page, but uh, that's great that's very powerful from my understanding here yeah, you can see all the configurations and everything congratulations guys for reaching this far of this uh, video today we have covered a lot today we have covered a very cool aws service that is aws cloud formation so if you guys have any questions or any sort of doubt related to cloud formation let me know under this comment section and i'm going to reply back very very soon uh, Thank you so much for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. And uh, if you guys want to see more of this sort of content, please like and subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to upload more and more videos in every week. So that's all for today. Have a great and wonderful day.